My name is Frank Collada. I am the last living gangster in Las Vegas. 360000 dollars armed robbery that I committed and got away with. So I put six bullets in those head. And he ran. I looked at the gun like, did I miss this guy? I knew it was pressed against his head. He was a scared. I don't blame him. I met him in Stateville Penitentiary. And once a week, he would kill an inmate. We just put him in a bag, and nobody ever said anything about it. It was just another guy who committed suicide. I was a... Hey, guys. Welcome back. It's Mob Blog. Today is Wednesday, August 11th, and it's Redness Day. So we have Red Wimet with us. Anyway, welcome back. Mom. Red Wimet, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Adam. Well, fantastic. I hear that it's uh it's a lovely day in Florida. Very nice. Well, very good. A little cloudy, but that's okay. Wonderful. Well, hey everybody! Uh, welcome into the uh, into the show here today. Cindy Workman, Mickey Griggs, Joe Clark, Scott Mattaggart, Brandy, or sorry, Brad Win 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 Stanley Win Stanley. Sorry, Brad Win Stanley, Big Tuna, uh, Brett. What's happening? Paul Brown, uh, David Grimp. Everybody's here. Outfit Boss, Evil Rev, uh, Anthony D Martini. How's it going? Good to see you, Eric. Epstein, everybody, everybody's here. Hey, hey stop. He's a new one, isn't he? Sonny Zaro, what's happening? Who's that, Red? X Cop. X Cop. I, you know, I've never seen X Cop before. Hey, welcome in, uh, X Cop. Uh, Brian Hughes, good to see you again. Chris Edmondson, everybody, Pad, Pam, uh, Rudnick, and Grand Dave. Hey, Hi, how's Pam. it going? <laughs> How's it going, Grand Dave? That sounds like a new name, too. I haven't heard you before. So, uh, Sammy DeBull. Uh, do, 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 yeah, I guess interesting names here, guys. So, so today on Mob Vlog, which is the only show that talks about nothing but Chicago outfit history, today we're going to be talking about the Grand Avenue crew. And uh, there's a lot of history, a lot of history to the Grand Avenue crew. And we're going to jump into that in a, in, in a minute or two. Kevin Jones, how's it going? Uh, P.A.B., how's the screenplay on Frank's life coming? How are we today, fellas? Hey, P.A.B., uh, things are things are coming along on it. I got to say, though, it's been busy with everything opening up in town. And uh, I, I think I told you guys that I was working uh, with uh, Denny Griffin, and unfortunately, he's not with us any longer. So, um, but I have a stack, a stack of notes and uh, things that are putting together. So, Ger uh, Gerald Fitchner, how's it going? Well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to Mob Vlog. This is going to be hey, a fun guys. time today. This will be a guys fun and time. Guys, how, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. So, Red, uh, and hey, for some of you that are just coming in here, don't forget to smash the like button. Be sure to hit the uh, prescribe at the bottom, and uh, Kalata Kalata, a lot, a lot of ching ching ching. Bradwin Stanley, uh, I love it. Dennis Paulson and the Sands Avenue crew, like it was yesterday. The Sands Avenue crew? Grand Avenue crew. He misspelled it. <laughs> and the Grand Avenue, exactly. I'm just going Sands Avenue crew. Okay. Um, probably fat fingers on the phone. All right. Anyway, I know I have that problem. With it. I'm typing with my, my thumbs are too big. It's a fat finger thing. So that's all right. It's better to have the fat finger syndrome than SFS, which is... <laughs> No, no, you know, come on, Red. Once you get up to that certain age and you go to the doctor, they gotta they gotta do that little thing, you know. <laughs> My doctor's like, I'm sorry, I got uh, SFS. I said, What's SFS mean? He said, short finger syndrome. See, so fat thumbs are better than short fingers, man. I'm just saying that's what <laughs> all righty then, George McNamara. How are you? <laughs> it's good to good to see you guys. Uh good to see you guys. How you doing, George? Okay, guys, so 
Grand Avenue Crew, Red. Let's jump into this. Where do you want me to jump? My well, first. You want to start? My, start where? Yes. My first uh, introduction to the Grand Avenue Crew was in '68, and the boss at that time was Phil Aldericio, Milwaukee Phil, and he was also the boss of Chicago. He's an intern boss. Um, so it came down, you know, in echelon. There were, uh, he was the boss. There were soldiers and there were uh, associates that were gamblers. You know, they, they ran their own book and stuff like that. And burglars that actually went out on scores like Frank and that sort of thing. So it was, uh, it was a pretty big crew. I think it was the biggest crew in the city at the time because they really covered a lot of areas. They in covered this- up in Lake County. I mean, uh, Louis Ebley had had things up in Lake County. There was Larry Petit, Joey Petit. They were uh, second story men. They were thieves that actually worked Lakeshore Drive. Nice okay. guy. Easy to get along with. And what they did for a living, I don't care. I mean, they're, to hang out with them, to sit around with them, it's just like talking to you folks. George McNamara, Molly Stanwood Shop on Grand and Armor. I was never there. Don't know about that, George McNamara. So, uh, Pab, what? Uh, where does Grand Avenue and West Side Crew run into each other? It's really part. Of the, that's one. That's they call them the West Side or, or Grand Avenue. It really, I, I think it starts at Harlem, and it goes all the way down to Taylor Street. Anybody that came out of the patch, and then Cicero was west of there, and I don't know. It, it was they kind of merged in uh, in what they called Chinatown, that area. That was part of uh, the Grand Avenue crew. How many people would you say? Oh wow! At that time, when I was around, um, I would say maybe two hundred fifty, three hundred people at least. Wow! That's a minimum. That's a minimum. That's why it's hard when people ask, you know, did you know so and so? No, I didn't know <laughs> because there's a lot of people. It's not like they all gathered together at one spot. It was only different times when we gathered spots. So different, very different. All right, Alberto, has there ever been a war between different crews? There have, there was, but they didn't last very long. They lasted like one day. And then whoever was in charge of Chicago, they had their sit down between the bosses and said, knock it off. It's like Jimmy Couture's crew, you know, the South side. He had a a thing going with uh, the Grand Avenue crew and he had a thing going with uh, Al Palato, but uh, they clipped him. They killed him. Hmm. They asked him to retire. He didn't want to retire. So he bought a big home, built a big home out in Scottsdale, California or excuse me, uh, Arizona. And uh, he never moved into it. He made the pretense, oh yeah, I'm moving, I'm, I'm gonna retire, but he never did. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> Frodo Jack, who were the made members of the Grand Avenue crew at that time when you first were introduced? Uh, let's go, there was a lot of them. Uh, Tony Spalaccio was made. Joey Lombardo was made. Uh, Louis Ebley was made. Naturally, Milwaukee Phil was made. Um, that was about it during that era. That's a lot of bosses, you know. <laughs> and they had their own crews. I mean, you know, they had their own people working for them. Right. Okay, so anyway, uh, uh, Italians, was it ever anybody who was not Italian that was made into the mob? Any non Jimmy Marcello. Jimmy Marcello, he was half Irish. Okay, so Wayne Connors, I hope that answers your question. There's, so the answer is yes, it can happen. Hey, Leo, how you doing? <laughs> Leo, what's happening? Uh, 
So Gerald Fitchner, interesting. The famous patch. How did Al Capone from Brooklyn organize Chicago at such a young age? What are your thoughts on that? He was ruthless. He was willing to do things that other people wouldn't do. He'd slice your throat. He'd kill you. I mean, he was climbing the ladder. He was a young man that was just climbing up the ladder with Johnny Torrio. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I believe Torrio retired and said, you can have the whole thing. I'm out of here. After there was an attempt made on his life. Okay. And Colosimo was dead. Mysteriously. Some people say Capone did it, but I don't know. Nobody really knows. It's like Sam Giancana. Who killed him? We don't know. Right. No one, no one's ever going to know. Although some people are very, very, very sure of themselves as oh, yes. to who killed Sam Giancana. So well, they, but, there's the same thing with the uh, Colosimo. There's some right. people that are very, very sure that it was this, you know, huh? there's different uh, theories on it. Of course. Uh, it's kind of off subject. Brian Glade, those asking, uh, was Betty Lauren Maltese friends or connected somehow? Uh, she's from Cicero. Was she friends? Yeah, she had all kinds of friends in the mob. I mean, to be mayor of Cicero, you had to have friends. <laughs> one okay. time there was one mayor out there that uh, gave him a hard time. I, I, I forget who it was. And... Uh, uh, whoever it was, he was in charge of Cicero. He went right over to the mayor's office, punched him in the head, and that was it. He told him, you're going to do what we tell you to do, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. now, there's a lot of stories from back then of pol politics and oh, yeah. all the, the mob because, it, it, yeah, it's all it's all connected. Her, yeah, big, big two in a See, everybody's, everybody's over here. Her husband Dave was Krippy, really connected. Dave Krippy, I believe you. I agree with you. Ah, uh, Dave Grimp about the CIA did it. The CIA did it. Could be, like I said, everybody has a has an, has a thought as to who did it. And uh, was Harry Reid originally getting paid under the table? Somebody else asked, "Did you ever meet Harry Reid?" No. No. TC said that he met Lombardo at a backyard barbecue off Wooden Grand Gruff. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt it at all. Uh uh, George wants to know: Have you ever heard the Have you ever heard the term "mafia's piggy bank"? Yes. What does that mean? Uh, at the end of the at, at the end of the month, everybody would put in. They would take their money and put it in to the kafirs to the you know uh, like a slush fund. And yeah. then each each crew boss from each you know area, each crew would get like a salary out of there. Mm -hmm. Every Everyone would get a salary out of there. So if one crew didn't really do too good this week or this month, they would still get the same amount. Like if uh, Chicago Heights didn't do too well or uh, if Grand Avenue didn't do too well or somebody didn't do too well, Elmwood mm -hmm. Park, whatever, the bosses would still get their same, you know, their, their checks, so to speak. <laughs> it was cash, but, you know. They get paid. Right. Um, like how many, they call it the you, piggy bank because it was the piggy bank. Everybody put money in the piggy bank so they'd have extra just in case. And money to take out. Pete Byron, how many crews were there? Oh, wow. That's a tough one, Pete. Let's see. There were. Let me see if I can count them all. There was a South Side crew. Southwest side too, you know, going over that way. Then there was um, uh, the crew that was out where you lived in Calumet City, and that was absorbed by uh, Chicago Heights. And then there was the Rush Street crew, and then there was the Grand Avenue crew, and there was the North Side crew. And then there was the Lake County, up in Lake County. They had their own crew, Elmwood Park crew. Um, so how many did I name? Nine. Okay. About nine. nine. About nine. During my era. I don't know what's left today and what, you know, what it was before then. You so it was right all the way back to 1968. So 68, 78, 88, 
things changed in the 90s. They changed a lot. 26th Street crew equals the South Side crew? Question mark. No, 26th Street crew was part of the Grand Avenue crew. Well, what about the Gianni crew? What Gianni crew? The Gianni Russo crew. Oh, I think they were in a different city. Maybe they were in his mind. Who knows? Oh, kid, stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bath Avenue crew? I never heard of that. Grand Mickey Avenue Griggs? crew, not Bath Avenue crew. Okay. Lake County. How long did the Chicago how long did the Chicago Heights crew last? Sean Pender's asking about. A long time. They were around way back in the Capone era. And I'm guessing now that they kind of met their fate like around 2000. Huh. 2000, huh? So, so uh, James Roberts asking, do you, did you ever hear of a guy named Tommy three times? He got that name because he said everything three times, said everything no. three times, said everything three times. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's like that movie from uh, Goodfellas uh, where he says two times or whatever. Whispers. Dude, I got to go get the papers, get the papers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I never met anybody like that. Never heard of him. And believe okay. me, they would have talked about him. Interesting. Did the outfit get involved with any of the Indian casinos in the area? Did they even have Indian casinos back then? No. Okay. They had bingo rooms and stuff and reservations. Oh, yeah. Joey Lombardo. Joey was big into gambling. Very mm -hmm. big into gambling. They had gambling right down on uh, Burton and Wells at the uh, uh, New Orleans Apartments. Billy Kent, they used to open up their parking lot. They had gates for indoor parking, and they'd put yeah. gambling tables in there, mm -hmm. real gambling tables, like Las Vegas tables, slot machines, and everything else, and then they shut the gates, and they'd have people come in there and gamble. They paid off yeah. the 18th district to do it. Because I talked to a couple of coppers, and said, yeah, they know what's going on. They knew what was going on over there. They said, we don't bother them now, <laughs> today. <laughs> um. The Bath Avenue crew is part of New York. I'm just watching the 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 side comments here, and Cindy Workman saying, "Yeah, Bath Avenue is New York City." Is correct. Uh, Pam, I think, also said it. Uh, Pam also said that Gianni, but he was in charge of all of the crews. <laughs> Gianni's around. Michael Graham, Red, do you believe Tony Accardo, who started with Capone, participated in the St. Valentine's Day massacre? At one time, I did. At one time, I, I believed that he did. Yes. Okay. Uh, was Milwaukee its own family or a crew connect a crew of the outfit? No, he was uh, he was part of the crew. I mean, he was. Uh, I don't understand that, Wayne. Um, Milwaukee was its own family. No, was he it wasn't its own? his own family. No, no. no so, so it was. It was okay. Got it. So, hope that answers your uh, question, Wayne. Um, shoot, even, wow. even Milwaukee was part of Chicago, Valley Astry, whatever and, you know. That crew up there, they had their own crew, but they reported to Chicago. Uh, Bruce City. Oh, the Chicago outfit tried to become silent partners in a proposed Indian casino in southeast Wisconsin. The casino never got approved to get built. Yes, interesting. That's I, true. I didn't know, yeah, I never heard that. Wow. It's about Thanks. the same as the Rosemont Casino. They tried, tried, tried. It never happened. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Uh, Phil Hadaway, thanks for clarifying it. The Bath Avenue crew is a rough crew in the Bonanno, Bonanno family. Jimmy Calandra. Calandra? Jimmy Calandra was one Calandra. of the... Calandra. Was one of was one, and he has a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So I could go over there and listen to him. He may say his name, and then I'll know how to pronounce it. <laughs> he and John A. like attack each other over YouTube. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, interesting. So thanks for that, Phil. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, Adam Red. Good to see you guys. Tim Foster. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, Stuart Gordon. Tell a quick story about Tony the Ant Spilatro. Do you, have any short, do, you have any, do you have any do you have any short stories? 
about Tony? You know, short, short stories. Short Tony, stories. Short stories. <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm telling you, that's going to happen. Uh, about oh, your shit. <laughs> he had heels on his shoes that were that thick. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I couldn't help it. I've already talked about the automobile, you know, the Lincoln that he bought me. So, um, I don't know. I really don't have uh, something that I can bring off the top of my head. No. Uh, something pops in your mind, let us know. Okay. Um, Alan Glick passed away recently. Yes, he did. And... Boy, when you read that, when you read his uh, epitaph, you know, on, online, yeah. It made him sound like he was the king of Las Vegas, and uh, he really did all this. And did he was a great real estate developer? No shortcomings. I mean, it was obviously it was a eulogy, but uh -huh. uh, they weren't exactly accurate on everything they said. <laughs> right. Sixty-two million dollar Teamsters loan from Alan Dorfman to Glick. Yeah. Uh, that's what Nothing it was. Shady's going on. No, all right. So yeah. Uh no, I did. He passed away August 1st, everyone, if you didn't hear. Um, but I think we mentioned it last week. Uh did any outfit crews operate any operations in northern Wisconsin? Not that I know of. Not an opera. Well, they were all over the place. I mean, part of Milwaukee, that was Milwaukee. I mean, they they did things up in northern Wisconsin. They had uh, they had the pornography up there. I can tell you that much, and they had B girl joints up there, but uh, I don't know. I was never really in any place up there, so I really don't. I can't tell you. Um, okay, so Grand uh, Grand Dave, how much was the Grand Avenue crew making a month at its peak? What would you say? What do you think? It's only a guesstimate. It's only a guesstimate. At its peak, I would say it was probably the whole, for the whole crew, everybody ch chipping in. It was probably making maybe twenty-five to thirty million for the month. Okay. Um, who took over the Grand Avenue crew after Louis the Mooch? Louis, I believe. That was Jimmy Cozzo. Jimmy Coso got made, and he wasn't 100%. Uh, that was in the 90s, but he wasn't 100% uh, Italian. Uh, there's another one for you. It's made that wasn't 100%. Well, I wasn't there when he was made. I was gone by that time, but he got made. He, he ran that crew for a while. Uh, lots of them came up to vacation in northern Wisconsin. Sean yes, Hayward, Hayward Wisconsin, a lot of the places got mentioned all the time. They go up there uh, snowmobiling, all kinds of things. Uh, quickly, meet Leo Mendez, uh, uh, Jerry McGee, Rosenthal, Marmer died uh, in 1982, and she was found in a seedy motel in Hollywood, uh, died of a drug overdose, supposedly what is thought to have had uh, happened is that the guys she was hanging with gave her a pure dose into her or drugs into her arm. And, and that's what killed her. <clears throat> Lefty said it was a hot shot because they drained her of all her money. That was it. She didn't have anything left. Yeah. She had a few dollars left and, and uh, that was it. So who no one's ever going to know. That's another one. It's no one's ever going to know. So, yeah. It's just how it's how it goes. They really didn't work on that homicide very well. Right. And even an overdose or a suicide is considered a homicide until they mm -hmm. actually find out what's the cause of death is. Sure. Um, okay, so was was Sam G and got was I, I'm not even gonna try this last name. La Figliola. Michael yeah, LaFigliola. Sounds like LaFigliola. Okay, Michael LaFigliola. Hey, Red, was Sam Giancana boss or acting boss under Tony Accardo? He was the boss. The Tony re retired and became the consigliere. You know, he, he, he just gave him advice. That's all. Um, hmm. 
Tony retired look, more than anybody I know. He retired and retired, and he kept coming back every time they needed him. It's kind of like Sarone. When they needed him, he was there. Rose um, yeah, it was so intertwined with the outfit that the new Rivers Casino at Devon and River Road is on the north side of Devon. And Des Plaines is still the south side. On the south side of the which street. Is which, Rosemont. Is, which is the Rosemont. <laughs> yep. Mike, they uh, they really wanted to keep it out of Rosemont. Reportedly, Capone had a brothel in downtown Min Minnequa, Wisconsin, called the Brown Jug. Yes, I've heard that story, but, you know, I didn't see it, so I don't know. Tim Foster, you got your pizza box today. All right. And got your uh, book from uh, Get Red's book. Awesome. Thanks Great. again, Tim. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good video. Watch it after the show today. Unless you already watched it. <laughs> and I'm also, like he's got... Those, I'm like the, a kid with those things. As soon as they come out of the box, I got to watch it right away. Don't forget, by the way, Tim, look on the gun and plug it in. And there's a file in there called, um, it's called Frank's phone, phone pictures. And in there, uh, there, I put a couple of pictures in there. It's Frank inside the vault at Bertha's at the jewelry store where they all got busted. Mm -hmm. He, he got into the vault eventually where he had, as he was standing there with the, you guys look at the picture. You'll see he's pointing at the ceiling where they dug the hole. It's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, he talked about that in one of his one of his stories, didn't he? He I'm did that. Part. He went that he went in there. Yeah, that he went into the uh, into the uh, Something store. Something about his watch. He went in with his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went into the store. They put up all the cameras on the store the next day. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Red, is it true that Lombardo, as a fugitive, was seeking Patrick Spilatro's help to fix a tooth? Is that story actually true? That he'd have gone to him while he was out on the lamb and said, "Hey, I yes, got a he toothache." Did. He went to him several times, and uh, he was trying to get it fixed. And Pat never gave him up in the beginning. He just wanted to learn more about what happened with his brother because he knew Joey was tight with uh, with uh, Tony, and he knew he would have to know if he gave the okay. But he was in prison; he couldn't give the okay. I mean, Ayupa gave the okay. All the other guys gave the okay for that. So Pat was trying to get information, but he couldn't get any more information. He had all he needed, then he turned him into the FBI and collected his $20,000 reward. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he did collect the reward? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I guess if you're going to, you know. Uh, why, don't the, why, don't, why don't they let people run the outfit from jail? Seems like a big difference from all the other families, John McShane saying. They did at one time, but not the leaders. They always had to put somebody on the street to keep people in control. There was always somebody kept on the street that, while I'm gone, you take care of this. It's like when Phil went to prison, Milwaukee Phil. Mm -hmm. He went to prison. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Jackie Cerrone took over. And... It was an interim. It was a short thing. And then eventually, uh, who came after that? Uh, Ayupa, Joey Ayupa. Hmm. That gives him time to sit down and say, okay, which one are we going to install here? Which one are we going to install there? Okay. Uh, Paul Brown, does Frank mention Liberace on the DVD? No, but I did put up a video where Frank did mention it was last week there was a little discrepancy. It was like, did this happen? Didn't it happen? Yes, he did. He robbed Liberace. And that's what he said. And then he said he had to throw all of it away because it was all junk costume jewelry. I like that video. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> Just his attitude through the whole thing. And then he felt so sorry for Red Fox. They left him a $20 bill. <laughs> I'm telling you. So that's that is uh not that yeah, it's not mentioned in the DVD. Uh it, it isn't. Um <laughs> how was Donald Stevens involved with the Chicago outfit? Donald Stevens? Yeah. Ring a bell? He, yeah, he was the mayor of Rosemont, and um 
he had a ghost payroll with uh, different outfit guys that were on the payroll that worked for him as a city inspector, building inspector. Uh, Jeeps was one, Dodino. He was on a ghost payroll. And even, even though he was in prison for like three and a half years, he still paid him when he was in prison. Mm-hmm. When he was questioned about that by the reporters, he said, hey, that's what friends do for friends. Uh, where did Lombardo live? Joe Lombardo, which neighborhood? He lived on Ohio Street. He stayed He stayed in that neighborhood where all the rest of them moved out to the suburbs and, you know, Hinsdale, whatever. I mean, they, they moved all over the place. He stayed right in the same house that his wife's fa his father-in-law and his mother-in-law owned. And when they passed away, it went to his their daughter, which was his wife. And they stayed there until the end, until he went to prison. Pab says, I've heard Rivers Casino and Des Plaines was mob controlled too. They all are. In yeah. one way or another. Alaric Goth. Did Tony Spilatra wear a toupee? There are some pictures where it appears he's going no. bald. No, not that I know of. I watched him dive in the water. He didn't have a toupee on. It would have come off. Wayne Connors, not the brown jug, but other businesses in the area. We're talking Capone, Wisconsin. We're back to that. Um, why did Glick never get whacked? What do you think, Red? He went into witness protection. Well, and I sense. used to hear all the guys say all the time, if they heard witness protection, they said, forget about it. You're never going to see him again. It was a very secure program. Did Wayne Bach work with Chucky English? At one time he did, yeah. Um, I, so TC says, Rivers is owned 51% by Churchill Downs and the rest by Neil Blum, Rush Street Gaming. Neil Bloom, sorry, Rush Street Gaming. Right. So you have no idea. Well, well, you know, it's like it's like saying uh, Alan Glick on the on everything else. I mean, who's the real people are getting the money off of it? Sure. You put anybody on the look on the license, the gambling license, but uh -huh. who actually really owns it or controls it? Right. Oh, well, I mean that makes that makes sense. I mean, obviously. Um, uh, Steve Clutter, I'm visiting Chicago right now. Are the I'm visiting Chicago right now. Are the mob tours worth it? And where can I get some good Italian? Well, if you're if Portillo's, you're visiting Portillo's. <laughs> if you're visiting Chicago, you, you get good Italian just about anywhere. Um, are the mob tours worth it? I I don't know uh, which mob tours that you're talking about because I never heard anybody complain about any of them. I've never heard anything bad about the Untouchables tour, and I've, I've taken it myself, and I thought it was, it was okay. Um, and I've also heard about Frank Calabrese's tour, uh, which I've never taken. But just recently, I saw Cindy Workman, and she took it, and she told me that it was uh, pretty good. Everybody I've seen on Facebook or something like that online, they said they enjoyed the tour. Hey, just read the comments, Steve Clutter. Everybody's putting up in the comments uh, where you can where you can go eat. Uh, so, um, Red, did you know Pete Cheverilli from Demon Dogs? I met him a couple times. He was close friends with Frank Schweiss. Okay. He also uh, he was involved in the meat block. You know, Schweiss tried to put that in his name, mm -hmm. and. He also put some real estate in in uh, Pete Chevrolet's name for the meat block because he wanted to go on the liquor license there. And then he put his name on, I forget the name. It was on Wrightwood, the mansion, uh, big mansion on Wrightwood Avenue. Um, okay, Gary Mushinsky, good question. Were Frank Schweiss and Tony Spilatro friends or acquaintances? Were They, they were friends. I used to watch them play cards together years ago, but then okay, again, I would say I would say at the end Frank didn't have any friends because 
if he turned around and said, kill him, you know, they sent him out to kill him, they, they, he'd do it. He didn't care if you, it was his brother, you know. <laughs> were, were any other non-made guys present when Tony and Michael were killed? Non-made? Mm -hmm. They were all made. Okay. They wouldn't trust that to anybody that wasn't made. All right. Well, William Kirchmayer. I, I'm going to read it anyway. Were any Germans, Krauts in the Chicago outfit? Respect to the real. I, Frank the German? Maybe. No, he was half German. He was half yeah. German, half Italian. His mother was Italian, Sicilian. And his father was uh, German. Got it. Any others? Not that I know of. Okay. Hope that answers your uh, question there. Um, Red, do you know of uh, the hit on the co-owner of Thunderbird Catering, Richard Crofton, around 1982? So I, only what I read. Only what I read. Nobody ever really talked about it. Okay. And there was a Thunderbird Motel also that was involved in that, you know. That guy, whoever he was, he didn't cough up the money. <laughs> so they killed him. Uh, McFamily, uh, it's a good question. Where, was it ever made known which house in Bensonville that the Spilatros were killed at? I don't think it was ever on the news, but I was told by everybody involved, you know, it wasn't on the news, that it was um, uh, Louis Ebley's old house. He lived there, Louis Ebley. It was in, uh, what was that, Hinsdale? Or Bensonville. It was Bensonville, but that's yeah. right by Stone Park. But he moved out to Oak Brook. And when he did, he bought all new furniture and everything. He was getting ready to die. He knew he had pancreatic cancer. And he left the place sit like it was. So it, to me, I was told, and I believe Frank told me, and a lot of other people mentioned it, that it was Louis's house. They felt it was safe there. It was an empty house. Mm -hmm. Not empty. It had furniture in it, but there was nobody coming and going. You know? um, somebody asked earlier where, what's good eats in Chicago, and uh, the Rosebud is what Cindy uh, Workman is saying, and she's saying that's per Frank. Frank Collada, that is. That said, go to the Rosebud if you're in Chicago. So check out the Rosebud. Um. Red, did you? Uh, Red, did the outfit have any dealings with the Montreal Sicilian family? Michael Lafagol Lafagolia. Not that I know of. They they really the only thing I do know that they went east on was sorry uh, Lafigliola. Sorry, I apologize. Lafigliola, so yeah. Sorry. Didn't he ask a question before? Yes, he did. Yes, uh, he's asked a few here. Yeah, um, not that I know of. The only connection that I do know of is the Lucchese family in in, in uh, New York that, uh, you know, that was, they were close, close bonds. I know Frank was telling me one time he went to, uh, he went out to Jersey, New Jersey, and uh, did some work out there. He was a contract killer, but he worked from the East Coast to the West Coast. I mean, he worked from the South all the way from Don Arno all the way up to Canada. I mean, mm -hmm. he went where the money was. That's all. Where they told him to go, they'd point him, and he'd go and do it. Wow. Larry Lapper, who was the toughest guy with their hands from the Grand Avenue crew, in your opinion, Red? When I was around, mm -hmm. I would say Joey Lombardo. Really? Yeah. He was a good – that's why they called him Joe Palooka. He was a good boxer. Very uh -huh. good boxer. Fast with his hands. I mean, you know, two -two. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Um, he led with his left, and he had a knockout punch with his right hand. Tony was an uppercutter. He'd, come, he'd get close to you, and bang, he'd come underneath you. <laughs> Knock that shit up and snap uh -huh. the neck. That was it. He was Damn. a one-shot guy. He was, you know. Once he got in close and he knew he was going to do it one shot, that was it. He put him down. That was the end of it. But Joey uh, could go a few rounds. 
Did Tony have? Did Tony Splatter have a big funeral? Uh, yeah, he did. He did. Did you go? No, I was told not to go. Uh, Bob Conrad went, and I was very the newspapers. That was it. There was too much focus on it from the newspapers, but mm -hmm. uh, I was told not to go. And uh, <clears throat> when I saw, I respected John Conrad, uh, Bob Conrad. Mm -hmm. Show me the money! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love that. I do too. I I apologize. It went off, guys. I, I should have to bring her down here. Um, did did uh did you have any influence on Waukegan, Illinois? Did I? Yeah, that's what it says. Did you have any influence on Waukegan? I don't understand. No. No. I went okay. up there a couple times with Schweiss. We went up there to see about opening up a uh, porn shop right across from Great Lakes, uh -huh. Naval Base. And that was in North Chicago. Waukegan was close by, though. Gotcha. Sorry, because I'm just turning my ringers down here for a second. Um, I don't blame you. Uh, did Chicago have any dealings with the Quad Cities? Yes. Yes, they did. Oh, Alexander Gomez. Who's running the Avenue crew now? That's a very good question. You could probably answer it better than I could. Well, I'll tell you what. I Here's what I could tell you. And that is um, that, is that uh, they, they don't exist. And if you look around online, you can dig all around online. You'll find sites, sites that people put a lot of work into them. I mean, a lot of work The people, you know, you look at these websites and you go, hey, that's, that looks like a lot of damn good information. And you go, well, where would they get all that information from, though, if it doesn't exist? And it was, you know what I mean? So, no, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, Alexander Gomez. Go down to Richard's bar and ask sure. around down there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to tell you. Take a camera have with fun. you. Too. Yeah, take a camera with you. See, see what happens. Uh, a lot of people say that uh, Alvi Vienna is actually the boss. A lot of people say IND knows the boss. I mean, there's all these, but there's nobody that kicks up to them. I mean, they don't have any organization anymore. These were members years ago, and they may have invested their money in different things. They may have their own operations of their own, but there is no real boss. I mean, I could go there and go into the bookmaking business. Who's going to come over and break my legs? Well, I, I don't know. Go start a bookmaking business and find out. <laughs> I mean, you know. I know people is... that are independents. They're independents, and what they do is they just don't lay off on the mob anymore. They run their own book. They so, don't lay off. So, they don't lay off bets look, with somebody else. Look, is there crime? Yeah, there's crime. Is it organized? Not quite how it used to be. There's always going to be crime, though. I mean, wherever there's good, there's I evil. I just think so. about it as disorganized crime. <laughs> Not organized, disorganized. Disorganized. There you go. Um, I was in Great Lakes in 76. Could have used a good porn shop there. William Kirchmeyer. Could have, I was going to build one up there, right outside the main gate. <laughs> <laughs> In North Chicago. Pete Byron, where does the kicked up money go? Exactly. Well, it that's, goes, that's it the goes to the, the higher ups, but it, it gets kicked around into the uh, piggy bank. <laughs> and then it gets spread out equally amongst the bosses. But uh, that's where it kicks up. That's where it goes. Yeah, kind of it depends on what level you're on by how much money you get. Red, would you rat on Adam knowing that his family was part of the outfit? No. What the hell kind of question is that? Because my family's not part of the outfit. I mean, what no. is that? What and are, if it was, I, I wouldn't know anything to rat him out for. Uh, hey, Cindy, I'm glad to hear that the pizza box arrived, that you got the pizza. Cindy was the first one who ordered a pizza box, and it arrived. Thank you very much, Cindy. And I hope you enjoy the, the video on it. Um, it's like I said, that, that whole the whole inception of that thing was back in 2017. So it's 
that was the first interview I shot with Frank. So it's kind of uh, kind of interesting. I don't know what to say. There's some interesting questions in there and some interesting stories. So uh, what interested Red in opening porn shops, James Roberts wants to know, besides money, Red liked porn. I don't know. What do you think, Red? It was about <laughs> money. It was all about money. It was all about money. Um, it was all about uh, large quantities of money. Okay. So, so there you go. It's about the money. Bottom line, hit the like button, guys. We're 222 people in here. Mm, hit the like button. And if it's yeah, your first time on, in here. Folks. Give us some your, likes here. Show us some love. Yeah, it's your first time in here and you guys don't know about this channel. This is my vlog. What we talk about here is Chicago outfit related every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's Red and Day because Red, we met with us. And again. Pam, Pam, who are you talking to? Pam. Is it you? How are you? It, it is you. How are you? It is you. It, it's Pam. How's Pam? Pam Rudnick. A Las Vegas um, resident. Michael. Oh, boy. My, Michael Lafiglio, Lafigliola. Lafiglio, Lafiglio. Three times yeah. you got it right. This yeah. time you get work I, on. You know, I'm working on these names. Lafigliola. <laughs> Michael. How can I help grow this cast? Keep it up. Just keep showing up. Keep showing up. Keep smashing the like button when you guys show up. That's what you can do to help. Yes, grow sir. It. It's a matter of fact. I got to tell you guys, um, it's it's that we the channel is actually approaching twenty seven thousand subscribers per subscribers. Sorry, right now. So it's uh, it, it's growing. It's pretty wild how uh, how much that this. Uh, this thing is you never going, thought so. it would be that way, did you, Adam? It's going to go to 20,000. Well, I'll tell you what, almost a year ago, it was just about to hit 21,000. That was the last number that I ever said to Frank. So the fact that it's gone up another 6,500 since then is pretty wild that you guys uh, you know, are tuning in and watching. So uh, <clears throat> anyhow, Goran. People like your content. I don't know, Red. I don't know what it is, but I want to say that they they enjoy listening to the Chicago outfit, obviously, because they wouldn't be showing up if that's you know. And we've tried talking about other things. I was looking at, I was looking back at some of the um, some of the episodes that we did in early on here, and um, when we started doing this on Wednesdays, and we did one where we talked about DB Cooper, and I'm going to tell you what nobody. Nobody watched it, and nobody's still not. Nobody's still watching. No, nobody's still. They're still not watching it. Okay, they haven't. No one's gonna watch it. You know that why? That was your idea. It wasn't they mine. Don't, no, it's, <laughs> hey, you you gotta fail to succeed. That's the one thing I learned in life. You have to fail to succeed. And I say, hey, let's try this. Maybe it'll do something. Maybe it won't do something. You know, we watched the movie The Thief on here, which it's Chicago related in a way, and some yeah, people watched it, but it wasn't really Chicago. Yeah. Anyway, that's what the channel is. Hit the like button, guys. And I see a lot of you in here from Facebook today, which is great. Um, don't usually see that many people from Facebook in here. So welcome. Uh, welcome in, guys. OK, so I visited the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It's the Mercedes Benz dealership. John it, is now. it is now. Well, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre is just an empty field right now. Unless they've changed it the last no, year. No, next door is a Mercedes dealership, Mercedes car dealership. I don't think so. I don't, I don't on think Clark so. Street. Hold on. John Cooley Jr., I'm division in Austin. Division in Austin. Mm, I don't think so. I'm I'm just saying, when we were back there, I saw this. Uh, we were there. I went there, and I, it was just a big field. Unless they... I don't know. Changed it. Yeah, it's on Clark Street. That's what John Cooley's saying. Yeah, guys, hit the like button, hammer it out. Red, did Gene kind of play a part in? Oh, boy. Here we go. Cindy Fair. No, Cindy Farrell. It's empty. Yeah, the garage is gone. Don Ciccio di Porzalo. Don Ciccio di Porzalo. Uh, see, I'm getting better. Let me tell you guys. Uh, Filippo Corte, it's exactly it. it's a Clark Street field in a parking lot. That's what it is. That's it's right. A, 
The nearest one is on North Avenue. I just looked it up. St. Valentine's Day every day. <laughs> every day here. No, it's true. There's a damn massacre going on in Chicago every single day. It's not it's not a joke. More people are killed in Chicago daily than than on St. Valentine's Day massacre, which was a big it thing. Got, and, it got dubbed the murder capital of the world. It's crazy, man. When I was a kid, it was Gary, Indiana you had to stay the hell away from. Not Chirac. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Uh, it's a senior city. All the burned out homes in Gary and everything, it was really bad. Do you remember how run down that was? That's where Michael Jackson was from, though, Gary, Indiana. But it wasn't like that when he lived there. <laughs> oh. No, no, it was still booming. It was still a steel mill town. It still was, uh, you know, before all the, the big mills closed His down. His father worked. Joe Joe Jackson worked at the foundries, and when the kids took off, he quit his job. Yeah. I, I don't think he'd want to work at the foundries and manage the Jackson 5. <laughs> I wouldn't think so either. No. <laughs> he, Joe Jackson. Uh, did you ever meet Chucky Nicoletti? No. I never really met him. I saw him, but I never met him. We never shook hands, talked about anything, or something like that. Um, it's bad. I work at St. Elizabeth and Humboldt Park. It's sad. Sorry to hear that, Terry. Car uh, Carlino. Humboldt Park has been rough for a long time now. Luminous I mean, Grin. Thank you very much, Luminous Grin. That's very kind there of he you. Is. Appreciate How you doing, that. Buddy? <laughs> nice to see you pop up, man. Um, appreciate that uh, little bit of love there. Hey, luminous grin, get up, get a pizza box. Don't forget to get one. And guys, yeah. if you're uh, if you're in Vegas, if you guys come into Vegas. Uh, what you need to do is you need to um, let's do this. You guys need to get online and then go to this site right here. Vegas Specialty Tours, there's a 10% discount code right now. But but if you're watching this and you guys are in Vegas, you're coming to Vegas, and this is this offer is going to be good through the end of the year. If you guys are watching a mob vlog, um, use the discount code mob vlog. One word, M-O-B-V-L-O-G, mob vlog, and it, it will get you a 15% discount. So come in, click on the view details of the Vegas mob tour when you're there, and you just want to scroll on down over here to the book now buttons, and you guys can uh, pick your date, select how many tickets you want, and uh, book the tour. So it's a lot of fun. and uh, Or you could do a private tour. We do private tours as well. So, you know, give us a call. Um, Southside. Southside, how's it going, man? Thanks for the super sticker, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you very, Southside very much. Southside hockey. <laughs> Hell yeah. See, this, this, these are the words, Red. These words that you say like this. This is the words that, that YouTube doesn't like. Oh, like words I'm like sorry. that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Honky. No, no, I'm going to say it now too. Honky. You have to educate me. I, I'm, planning to, I'm planning to go no, out. No, I want to I make sure that we have to get a review on this video. <laughs> honky, honky, honky. I'm gonna come out and see you, Adam. I'm coming out. I to know. See you. When you come out here, it'll be cool. Red Red might come out to town soon too, so we'll yes. see if that happens. That's gonna that'd be kind of a kind of interesting. If if you do, we'll have to do a we'll have to do a live, you know, on that site. Would be neat. That, that would be, that would be really cool. Live. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so next week, guys, we have to talk next week because um, because wow, this hour flew by. I can't believe it. Um, well, what, what are we doing next week? Throw them out there in the, uh, side comments, dazzling urbanite. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Um, throw some ideas in the side. What do you guys want to talk about? How about, about the racetracks and how they were all fixed? The racing was tricky. Ooh, I like that. Jeremy was fixed. Uh, it was, we had, it was Aurora, first we had Aurora Downs. We had, uh, uh, the sister tracks in Cicero, Sportsman's. Um, we had uh, Hawthorne right next door to it, and then we had Arlington Park. I mean, Chicago's been famous. I don't know any other city that had that many racetracks. Do you? I don't know. I don't think so. There were a no. lot. No, there were, there were we a lot. We had a lot of tracks at one time. Okay, Sean Pender, gambling and bookies. 
uh, somebody else, William Kirchmayer, uh, counting for a horse track. I don't know. I think it's, it's let's just go with horse racing next week, guys. Let's do horse racing. There's um, a lot of stories on horse racing. Was ah. the Quad Cities racetrack involved? Oh, yeah, you guys got questions for days. This is perfect. Mob Rackets. Saw Chuck Berry at Sportsman's Park, 85 admission. Yes. Chicago horse racing. Yes. Dennis Paulson says yes. Ball, Belmoral and Crete, Sean Pender. Yes. All right. Yeah, guys. I think we're I didn't good even mention it. Belmoral, I don't think. Did I? Uh, I think you did. I think you did said I? Belmoral. That's the one that yeah. Peanuts, Pansco, uh, and uh, Basil uh, tried to take down. That's Belmoral. the only track I ever placed a, a bet at was Belmoral. Really? Hmm? Only time I ever placed, uh, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I lost. <laughs> It's only a couple bucks, but it was, you know. Yeah, well, that's like going out to Vegas and saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to play the slot machine. <laughs> yeah, I throw a few dollars and you lose. Sometimes people throw in a few dollars and they win. You know, you never know. How many how many bodies are buried under those tracks? No, you guys have questions for next week. No, we're not going to start about Maywood Racetrack. I know what you guys are all about. Maywood You're about and Arlington Maywood. Park. Yes. Wow. Some of those tracks rotated with um, indoor the indoor parks, and they yeah. had pacers through the winter. And so oh, really? Flats, they ran pacers through the winter. Huh. Wait What's the other ones? Pacers and trotters. Trotters and pacers. Oh, yeah? Huh. Well, Red, I got to tell you, I've had fun today, as <laughs> always. But I want to have a little bit more fun. So... I tell you what, I'm going to pretend to be like you for a few minutes. And I'm. <laughs> Let me gonna, light up one with you. <laughs> why, not, why don't you light one up? Now, listen, damn it. I'm not going to start smoking. I don't get any funny ideas. <laughs> Let's stay, stay, stay. Oh, 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 oh. Good boy. Oh, oh, oh. Getting excited there. Come on. Oh, 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 look at that. <laughs> Your cigarette has an erection. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Brett, if you get on a plane to come out to Vegas and you can't smoke, you just take them like. <laughs> Excuse me. I was just checking. I have to have a mask. I'm not just having a mask. I got to have a mask. <laughs> I got a mask to get on, and now they're talking oh, about certain you gotta, states want your vaccination cards, and I'm not vaccinated. Well, I don't think that they're uh, are they're going to no. I don't think no. They're certain airlines it. are saying, "Do you have your vaccination?" Da da. Yeah. Yeah, you got to put the thing on, and you got to put it on the plane, and that's it. You know, it's no big deal. So, anyway, um. <laughs> Uh, it's been fun, guys. Certain people knew who was coming in first and second during this. Exactly. Because they're always all fixed. Do. They all we all always do. Fixed. Dazzling Urbanite. Wow. Magic. Yes, magic. And I could pull my finger off. Dink, dink, dink. All right. So <laughs> um, that trick is crazy good, though. Thank you very much. The That's man cool, with many, many talents, Adam Adam Flowers. What can you say? You got you to gotta have some... Uh, this is mob blog. The assistant gets cut in half for real. <laughs> That's funny, huh? Hey, guys. It's been a lot of fun uh, today. I uh, unfortunately can't hang in, uh, uh, over time. But I did talk to Red about something the other day. A friend of mine uh, told me about and said, hey, um, um, he said, hey, um, you got to check out this app. And I said, oh, yeah. So what's this app about? And I suggested this to Red the other night. We were talking. It's called Clubhouse. And I said, after we go live, we should try it out just for you know people who want to follow along and you know hang out for a few more minutes. But what Clubhouse is, it's, it's, it's an app that uh, you get to interact. So you don't just type, but you can put your hand up in the app, and then the moderator approves you, and you can have a voice. You can actually be part of the podcast. And say what you want to say and be part of the discussion at the same time if you um at the same time uh people if, are going to be talking over each other well no you have to take turns and you have to respect each other 
Okay. You know, that's part of it. Because if you don't, and you're just going to sit there and talk over the other person, uh, persons, uh, then you get muted. So yeah, Anna will put the hook on you. <laughs> will William Kirchmeyer, th thanks for pronouncing my name correctly. Work on the Italian names, please. William, that's why they call me the butcher. Okay. <laughs> that's why they call me the butcher. Because I, I, I just, it's just the, wow. <laughs> Mr. Kirchmeyer, it's well noted. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, anyhow, get a call in cast. Exactly. That's what it is. Do it. John Cooley Jr., do it. Yeah, I just joined two days ago. All right, you just hit the channel. You just uh, enjoy it. So get, uh, guys, it's called Clubhouse is the app. And next week, we'll try it. We'll try it out. So if you're watching, it's Clubhouse. It's Clubhouse. Okay, there you go. That's where you can download it. And that's where you can uh, you can join in. So I'll explain all that next week, how we do that and how it'll work. Uh, anyhow, it's been fun, guys. It's been a blast. Red, thank you so much for joining us again on Mob Vlog. Have a great day. Thank you. You guys. Sorry, I cut you off, Red. That's okay. You guys what? Have a great day. <laughs> I was talking to them. Take care. Mob Vlog. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I cut you off again, Red. What were you going to say? They're still typing in. Oh, they're still, of course, they're still typing in. Hey, guys, it's been great. Have a great day. <laughs> See you, Red. Bye, folks.